Hello Mordimers here and welcome back to my channel and I know I had a couple of days break uh, from recording but I have the problems with uh, uh, with my monitor so technical difficulties also I had some health issues and uh, now everything is a bit better so I can record and in the last uh, game which I uh, commented we had the game between Fabiano Caruana and Hikaru Nakamura and Fabiano Caruana as black had to win to still stay you know uh, in the tournament to not lose in the semi-finals that was the rapid section which finished two uh, to two so there was a draw and then players had to play a uh, blitz game so uh, again we have Fabiano Caruana and his blitz ranking 2711 he's 27 years old grandmaster Italian American grandmaster and he's gonna play as white and Hikaru Nakamura, uh, American uh, Grandmaster, uh, the best by ranking in Blitzes, 2900. Incredible ranking. He's 32 years old and he's gonna play as Black. And now, uh, why I'm showing the Blitz rankings? Because after the Rapid section uh, was drawn, the players have to play uh, two games in the Blitz and if it's not, uh, you know, if it's still draw and uh, then they play until um, one of the players get the better result. So uh, in the first Blitz, Hikaru Nakamura won and here is the second one. So let's see if Fabiano Caruana can actually manage uh, to come back again and this is very interesting game as well so without further ado let's jump into the board so uh, we have e4 by Fabiano Caruana we have e5 by Nakamura knight on f3 knight on c6 and now bishop c4 bishop c5 duo copiano one of the oldest opening uh, in the chess history at least 400 years on the board we have castle by Fabiano Caruana knight on f6 and here d3 we have d6 c3 so preparing d4 in the future uh, but also taking away the square d4 so there are not possible the for example jumps uh, to d4 we have h6 by Hikaru Nakamura so and uh, now Hikaru uh, controls g5 so uh, white can't for example jump on g5 uh, and attack f7 that would be uh, very very unpleasant uh, and also bishop can't come to g5 to pin the knight so this is also not possible so h6 always very useful move in duo copiano and rook on e1 we have castle by Hikaru Nakamura and now h3 so the same idea like h6 uh, and here a5 a5 grabbing more space on the queen side but also uh, preventing any b4 attacking the the bishop and also bishop can actually uh, retreat to a7 if needed uh, and here knight b on d2 and um, the most popular move actually here uh, would be bishop on e6 challenging this bishop this was played uh, many many times uh, and for example the game could continue as the most popular variation here uh, just I want you to feel the duo copiano a bit bishop on b8 and now very interesting maneuver queen on b8 with the attack from this side um, to the king and white have to react uh, quite well here okay because the knight can't jump here but the queen uh, together with the bishop can make a battery and attack f2 so uh, for example what could happen here is knight on f1 it's also a very typical maneuver uh, and the knight can jump to g3 sometimes to e3 then queen a7 as planned and now uh, bishop e3 uh, bishop takes on e3 knight on e3 and for example knight on e7 so uh, the knight is not pinned anymore can move for example to g6 so this is the most popular uh, line however here we have bishop on b6 which is played in 2020 quite often so i think this is more popular uh, nowadays we have knight on f1 by fabiano caruana and here knight on e7 so as you see the same ideas but without all of this maneuvering uh, knight on g3 and now 
Uh, bishop on e6, knight on g6 is uh, in database one of the last moves, however bishop on e6 was not played very often, but as you see all of these ideas are very very similar, sometimes in different moves order. Uh, we have bishop on e6, f takes on e6 and Hikaru Nakamura get this uh, massive pawn center and also semi open f file, so uh, Fabiano Caruana uh, have to be uh, aware of that of course uh, and now he attack the centers first so he play d4 we have e takes on d4 c takes on d4 so now uh, he attack in the center and now knight on g6 as planned bishop e3 so strengthening the center and d4 pawn and here a4 uh, very interesting, very good move because now uh, white actually can't easily expand on the queen side. So uh, Hikaru Nakamura controls uh, the queen side. For example, b4 uh, can't be easily played because can be met with the uh, with the capture and passau. We have queen on c2 and now queen on e8 by Hikaru Nakamura. We have a3, so uh, pushing the pawn is not possible now. And here d5 and Fabiano Caruana has to make some decision what to do. So for example e takes on d5, this is possible and after uh, knight takes on d5 what to play next, can try to play against this pawn but it's not really so easy. So uh, if the queen is centralized, for example queen on e4, uh, then simply it can be kick back, so knight on f6 and the queen has to uh, move back. Uh, it's actually, that would be very nice trap because if queen on b7 that would be a blunder uh, I just want to show you that it looks pretty good but actually rook a7 traps the queen can you believe that? this queen looks like a freely going but uh, keep in mind that these squares are controlled by the knight uh, c6 is also controlled by the queen and queen has nowhere to go so that would be a disaster uh, so it's possible to play but there is no advantage for white it's not so easy to play against uh, e6 uh, so we have e5 so creating this pawn chain however uh, it's very short pawn chain and the base is on d4 and it can be uh, easily attacked by c5 uh, we have knight on d7 by Hikaru Nakamura so uh, supporting c5 move in the future we have knight on d2 by uh, Fabiano Caruana and now bishop a5 pinning this knight so uh, Fabiano Caruana has some plans with this knight but for now uh, it's impossible so very nice uh, preventing move by Hikaru Nakamura we have rook e on c1 uh, unpinning the, the knight uh, and now c5 so don't waiting for anything uh, just attacking the base on d4 and this base of course uh, defending e5 pawn uh, but something has to be played here otherwise the pawn is gonna collapse anyway so we have d takes on c5 and knight from g to e5 as well uh, and here the rooks go back to f1 as there is too much pressure uh, on f2 so uh, the rook gonna be better placed on f1 we have knight on c6 so now uh, the knight blocking the pawn so the pawn can't really moves and also supporting uh, the march of the pawns by its own because as you see Hikaru Nakamura somehow managed to get this center so now he controls the center and now Fabiano Caruana tries to counter that somehow and he play b4 so he tried to create this very nice uh, pawn chain uh, of course uh, Hikaru Nakamura doesn't like it so he play a takes on b3 we have knight takes on b3 and now bishop backs to c7 as the bishop was under attack uh, and it's more useful in the defense as it defending the the dark squares here we have knight on d4 and here bishop e5 so uh, pinning the knight now so Hikaru Nakamura tried to make uh, the life of Fabiano as difficult as possible as he needs only a draw so he just you know prevent a lot of things uh, in this game uh, we have knight g on e2 now bringing extra defender uh, but it's still a pin here 
Uh, and here rook a5. So now attacking the pawn on c5 twice. What to do now as white? Uh, we have knight on c6 uh, with attack on the rook. So uh, there is no problem with this pin uh, for, for now. And now b takes on c6 and rook on a2. So rook is, was under attack, of course has to be moved. And now queen on e7. Uh, putting more pressure on c5. Now the c5 is attacked three times. Uh, we have rook on c1. So as you see the rook is very very busy on first rank and here Hikaru Nakamura play rook f on a8. So now he put the pressure on a pawn. Uh, we have a4 by Fabiano Caruana, so the pawn is now defended twice, and now bishop f6. So uh, Hikaru Nakamura is already ready to push the pawns in the center, um, and the bishop already supports them as well. Uh, we have rook on a3, and now e5 as planned. Knight on g3, queen on e6, uh, and here Fabiano Caruana decides to do something, as he has to win, uh, so he stop supporting a4 pawn, and he play queen on g6. Queen on g6, and uh, there is some threat, for example, uh, bishop can take on h6 as the pawn on g7 is pinned uh, but here knight on f8 of course is possible to kick the the queen back so queen would have to move but Hikaru Nakamura said okay you want to go for h6 go for it I play d4 I will help you to make a decision but what would happen if Fabiano Caruana takes the pawn now actually after bishop on h6 he would uh, lose the game because knight on f8 and queen can't move anywhere here as these squares are actually controlled so for example queen on g4 just exchange the queens and then win the bishop and win the game so uh, of course it's not possible Fabiano Caruana play bishop on d2 uh, and here rook on a4 as the pawn is defended only once we have rook a4 rook a4 and now knight on e4 so the knight prepares uh, to jump somewhere and create some threats uh, so for example the knight can jump to d6 but also it make a space for the queen so now queen can retreat still stay on the on the g file and also uh, that would be a threat already so uh, this is the idea here we have knight on f8 threatening the uh, the queen queen on g3 as planned and now king on h7 as now this was you know the threat and Hikaru Nakamura, of course, don't want to lose the pawn. Uh, we have rook on b1, so now uh, attacking from the flank, preparing some attacks on b7 or maybe on b8, uh, on the 7 or 8 ranks, so uh, that's the plan. Uh, always go with the rooks to the open files, and we have rook on a7 by Hikaru Nakamura. So he said, okay, you can take the 8 rank, but uh, 7 rank, I don't want your rook here. Uh, we have queen on d3. Now, this is very tricky because already uh, you see the knight can jump to f6 with the discovery and also double attack and win the piece. So black have to be extremely careful. This is why Hikaru Nakamura play king on g8. Uh, we have rook on b8. Now pinning the knight. So as you see, it start to be very, very hot here. And Hikaru Nakamura has to be very, very precise. But remember, this is the blitz game. Game, so you don't have much time for thinking you make moves almost automatically here uh, we have bishop on e7 bringing extra support to the uh, to the knight and now queen on f3 so also uh, put more pressure on the knight here so the bishop can't really move here uh, we have queen on f7 trying to exchange the queens queen on g3 uh, and now queen on e6 so going here and there and creating new extra threats and now Fabiano Caruana play rook on e8 pinning the bishop also so bishop can't move and it's quite important for the game pin and how important for example uh, what is possible here uh, 
is queen on f7. That would be the best move. However, it's so so complicated. Uh, and white actually could play, for example, rook on c8. And look at this move. Uh, queen on f5. I would like to just show you how complicated this position can become. Because it looks like nothing really going on, but it's really, really very rich uh, in the motives position. So, for example, bishop on h6, if uh, Hikaru Nakamura let this pin happening, now, as you see, there is a mating ideas here, very serious mating threat. But now, bishop h4, and look at this. The pawn is defended by the rook now, but also uh, the queen is under attack, the knight is under attack, the rook is under attack, but also this bishop is under attack. So all white pieces are under attack. Uh, but it's it's very, very complicated, but white actually can play rook on f8 and after queen f8, uh, queen h4, g takes on h6. And the position is slightly better for black, but white still have some chances uh, with the knight and the queen and open position of the black king. So, uh, very complicated position. However, here Hikaru Nakamura didn't go uh, for queen on f7. He played king on h7. So, he don't like this pin at all. And uh, this is why he played that. And here... Actually, Fabiano Caruana has a chance to win the game. However, he has to be very precise. So feel free to pause the video and try to find the winning move for white. It's not easy move, uh, but I already show you a couple of ideas what is going on. So maybe these are some hints for you uh, while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So, queen goes back, but not to d3, but queens go to f3. And it's very, very strong move. So, let me explain. First threat is, of course, uh, taking the knight. Okay? Knight can be taken as the bishop is pinned. I show you that idea already. So, uh, white would simply win the piece and, uh, and yeah, end the game. So, uh, what black can try to do? Move the knight. But knight on g6 is actually losing because knight g5 and... There, is, there are no moves and there is checkmate is coming. So definitely can't move the knight. Knight on d7 also doesn't work because queen on h5, okay? And now this move is coming again. Queen g6 doesn't work because rook on h8, okay? And now after king on h8, queen g6 winning the queen and also the game. So also doesn't work. So the best would be queen on d5 uh, and pinning the queen. However, it's still not really great. It's still better for white because rook on e7, rook e7 and now queen takes on f8. Okay. And now uh, rook f7 is possible, queen on e8, and uh, white just have two pieces for the rook, so uh, should be much better for white. Of course, it's still a lot uh, to play, but uh, definitely white stands much better here. So this was the idea to win the game um, this way. However, Fabiano Caruana was very, very short on time. I think it was less than one minute and he has to decide, uh, you know, in moment. And this queen already has a lot of motives. So sometimes going to f3, sometimes going to d3. And all of this is nearly impossible to calculate in, in the blitz. So, uh, you know, he play rook on b8. Uh, and now we have knight on d7 attacking the rook. And here we have queen on d3. So Fabiano Caruana don't take the rook, but if the rook is taken, of course, we're going to have a checkmate here. I will show you that uh, in, in a couple of moves. Uh, we have queen on g6. Uh, so still all of these ideas are on the board. With the rook on h8 and the queen getting on g6, uh, so Hikaru Nakamura has to be very precise here. We have rook on c8 now, uh, and what is the idea? This is also a very sneaky move, because if black play any move, for example, rook on b7, waiting move, 
uh, then actually rook c6 is very dangerous attacking the queen and queen has to be moved because if queen takes the rook then actually we would have knight on f6 double check also controlling g8 and after king on h8 we would have a checkmate so all of these ideas are still on the board very very dangerous uh, but here hikaru nakamura play knight on f8 again and it looks like very very similar position however uh, Fabiano Caruana play rook on c6 so he didn't recognize that uh, actually Nakamura play uh, some move like knight on f8 and he prevents um, this checkmate uh, he should play in this position um, you know after knight on f8 something like f3 okay and the game could continue just rook a1 king h2 and the game can continue but white stands definitely better but of course it's not so easy uh, uh, when you are short on time and then it's bleeds and you have to win you cannot just draw um, to decide what to do so uh, we had rook on c6 uh, and here Hikaru Nakamura just calmly took the rook uh, and Fabiano Caruana was what just happening knight on g5 with check uh, king h8 and then he realized okay this is the defender so i couldn't take on rook, rook on c6 so now it doesn't work all this idea doesn't work so we have knight on f7 now king on g8 knight on e5 attacking the queen queen d5 bishop on f4 rook on c5 and in this position fabiano caruana actually resigned the game so uh, hikaru nakamura got into the final uh because that is his second win uh in blitz and fabiano caruana resigned because he is uh, rook down rook which he sacrificed on c6 so that was not the greatest idea and let me know in the comments if you would like me to cover um some games from the another semi-final between magnus carlsen and ding liren and the final or maybe I should just move to another tournament which is played a uh, tournament of nations where where we have you know uh, China India uh, Russia uh, as a teams and also we have the for example block of countries like like Europe has one team uh, also quite interesting format online so we have a lot of tournaments uh, one tournament finished and then there is another and I already know that Magnus Carlsen gonna play in the Wilhelm Steinitz Memorial also organized by FIDE so we will see also who gonna play with him but there are no breaks uh, tournament after tournament very interesting uh, so let me know in the comment section what would you like uh, me to cover and if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like this video press unlike and of course uh, press subscribe smash the bell button and thanks for watching see you in the next one